Welcome back to her story. The last thing we learned was something about Simon cheating his finances so that they could go on a romantic getaway to Oxford. So I want to follow up on that. Let's search for Oxford. There was a conference, something to do with double glazing, in Oxford. A conference? A conference in Oxford? Well, that can't be a romantic getaway, unless maybe it was a, a kind of dual thing. Or maybe the conference was an excuse, and that's what you meant by cheating his finances. A conference on glazing, right? Maybe he said to Eric, like, hey, there's a conference I should go to, you know, to learn about some new things and increase my skill. And so Eric and the company paid for it, maybe. But it wasn't actually a conference? It's possible. So this is her talking about cheating finances. It was supposed to be a secret. Yeah, that's her talking about cheating the finances. And if you look at the timestamp compared to this, it's only a couple minutes after she said this. It was a conference. Something to do with double glazing. In Oxford? And this is, this is the statement immediately after this one. Are you sure? What would you be doing in Oxford if there was no conference? I remember calling him. He said it was boring and he spent most of the time at the bar. Okay, so Simon lied about the Oxford thing. And she's lying about not knowing what was up with that, right? Because then later she says that... It was supposed to be a secret. Yeah, I don't have to give up all his secrets. She did his expenses for a romantic weekend in Oxford. I did my husband. Look for expense. Okay, you got me. I'll confess. We were there. It was a dirty weekend. Simon was going to expense it, pretend it was a business trip. I used a made-up name. We stayed at the hotel, had room service, didn't leave the room. I had a great view of the river, and you could hear the church bells. Like you said, it was very romantic. Romantic, that's another thing I want to search for. Also something else, what? There's something else I was going to search for, what was it? There's another keyword I was going to search for, but I don't remember what it is now. Alright, romantic. Nothing else happened that night. We talked, then I said goodbye. Then next week I was singing the bar again, and there he was. And again the next week, he offered to buy me a meal. I told them I had already eaten. Um, and so we got chips and ate them on the beach instead. When we said goodbye, he asked me to kiss him. <laughs> Romantic. So Simon at some point obviously found out about Eve. Started going to her. Talking to her. And sounds like... It sounds like he wanted to have sex with her. Because of what she just said here. Nothing. Asked me to kiss him. And also, somewhere else she said that when they were talking, she said that um, Simon didn't mention that he was married. Yeah, she said something like, I don't know what he was thinking. In fact, I think that's literally what she said. Hmm. 
Ooh, got a couple new ones, but this has got to be the one where she says it. He saw me singing. Yeah, he saw me singing. Fascinated by her likeness, guessed my name from her tattoo. It was amazing to be able to sit and interact and talk to him after all this time. So I think she's saying it was amazing to actually be able to talk with him after all this time, because before she had been staying in the attic and not allowed. Um, Hannah didn't allow her to... to interact with Simon, to pretend to be Hannah. Hannah didn't want that. So she was never able to actually do anything with Simon. Well, <laughs> at least as far as Hannah knew, she wasn't able to do anything. But if you're in someone's attic pretending to be, you know hiding in someone's attic and you look exactly like them for like six months and you're in the same house like uh i'm sorry she did something like there's no way she didn't at some point she must have talked to simon and pretended to be hannah he didn't tell me he was married i'm not sure what he was thinking They got to bed feeling ill. I think it was flu or something. The neighbor called me. I had to use my key to let them in. We found them dead in their bed. And they'd been there for days. No one had noticed. Just awful. It was so soon after my miscarriage. The worst year of my life. I'd been so happy to get married. And after that, it was just like, fuck. Yeah, Jesus. I didn't even think about that, specifically. But yeah, she got pregnant, had a miscarriage, and then within months, both her parents died. Jesus. No. I told her it was one of my boyfriends. Someone I had met in the bar. I think she was happy. But I could tell she was thinking, why couldn't it happen to her and Simon? They were the ones with the real life. Why not them? She's talking about her pregnancy, right? No. I told her it was one of my boyfriends. Someone... I told her it was one of my boyfriends, so it sounds like she's saying that's she lied. That's what it sounds like. Like she just told her it was one of her boyfriends, but it wasn't. So, it was Simon. Why couldn't it happen to her and Simon? Why couldn't the pregnancy happen? After the miscarriage, were Hannah and Simon trying to have a kid again and they, they weren't able to? Um, I already searched for this, right? Yeah, I did. All right, let me cross that off. Let's see. Let me see if I can dig up any more references to pregnancy or baby or you know. Let's try boy and girl. Ooh, here's a bunch of new ones. <laughs> Was he my first? No need to be so coy. <laughs> no, he wasn't my first. That would have been Carl. Carl. He was a local boy in a band. It was a bit of a shit, but it was sexy. <sighs> we were 15. Mmm, a sexy shit. Family. So, Carl fucked off, and then there were other boys here and there, and then Simon. I wouldn't say that. It could be passionate. It's just... It was more than that. It wasn't just sex like I had been with the other boys. Again, I'm so confused. This is... She's the one with the, the tattoo, which I believe is Eve. Talking about like meeting Simon and having sex with him for the first time. I don't. I thought that was Hannah. I don't. I don't get it. I don't get it. Do I have these swapped? 
Is the one with the tattoo Hannah? I don't think so. Hmm. No, he doesn't keep a diary. That's my thing. I've kept one, well, as long as I can remember, since I was a girl. It helps make sense of my day. And when you're forced to put something into words, it just gives you perspective. Everyone's on the same page. Yeah, when I was at school, I worked part-time in the front shop. It was sort of an extended family thing. My dad used to work there, my mom worked there before I was born. I took care of paperwork, filing, typing out invoices, that kind of thing. It was a good job for a girl back then. I didn't work a till or anything, but I was quite shy, so I wouldn't have liked to have worked a till. Alright, I search for boy girl. Um, so searching for more stuff about pregnancies, so boy girl uh baby. Yeah, it looks like I've already done that. Pregnant is it preg preg I forgot how to spell pregnant. Well, apparently I spelled it right. C There's a new one. Hannah had a miscarriage. This was late in the pregnancy and it left her infertile. Okay, left her infertile. Yeah, so she wasn't able to have a kid. So that's when she's talking about how Hannah seemed jealous that that uh, Eve was pregnant. That's why she's so jealous. Why couldn't it happen to her and Simon? Because she's infertile. She couldn't have another kid. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm just thinking, does that mean Simon... Because it sounded like Simon was wanted to have sex with Eve. Does that mean S Simon wanted to have sex with Hannah's twin sister? Because she looked just like Hannah, and she could actually have a baby, and he wanted a baby? So Eve was like, was like Hannah's <laughs> replacement? Oh my god. It left her infertile. Felt like the universe had corrected its course. We were aligned again. But Hannah and Simon were still living with his parents. They were married. Simon had a job at the glaciers now. Derek had given him a full-time position after he left school. And then... Hmm. Maybe I'm just being super paranoid here. I'm not saying this based on any particular evidence, and I'm not going to accuse her of it, but what if Eve wanted wanted them to become aligned again? Right, because she says at the end here. It felt like the universe had corrected its course. We were aligned again. What if Eve played a part in correcting the course? I mean, that would mean that I, like, I don't know if there's something you could give someone that would cause them to have a miscarriage and make them infertile, and it wouldn't be, you know, detected. I don't know. That sounds kind of implausible. And would she really be heartless enough to murder her parents with death cap mushrooms? I mean, that also... I don't know. 
She would have to be really, really evil for that. That's pretty extreme. I, I think that's too extreme. But this is a detective sort of, uh, detective-y sort of game, so I'm just thinking I'm super suspicious about everybody's motives. Okay, so what, what now? Searching for boy, girl, pregnant, pregnancy. Uh, preggers. She never said preggers? Okay. Prego. No, never said that either. <laughs> uh, so I searched for baby. What about babies? Uh, what about infertile? Oh, there we go. This must be her mentioning after the miscarriage. Shit, that she became infertile. Yeah. I, mean, I was infertile. I thought I was. They told me I was infertile after the miscarriage because of complications. Wait, you said thought I was. I was infertile, thought I was. Does that mean she's no, she's actually not? I think it was that time, the first time, at the house, in his bed, that I got pregnant. Amazing, right? This fucking magic spell. <laughs> and they say lightning doesn't strike twice. I didn't tell him. I missed three periods. I had pretty irregular periods anyway, but three? I had always thought we were infertile. Both of us. I didn't tell him. I just waited. So Hannah and I were meeting for our birthday, and I told her because I thought she would be happy for us both. I think she was. There was another flash of my face. Okay, boy, girl, pregnant, pregnancy, baby, babies, and fertile. Hmm, what else? Let's follow up on something else. Let's search for a diary. She mentioned she keeps she's kept a diary ever since she was a girl. When I was eight, Mother died. She slipped down the stairs. It was an accident. I had read a diary at that point, and I knew she wasn't my real mother. So I burned the diary that day, and I left. Walked out and across the street. Wait, what? It was only eight when her mother died, her mother being Florence, the, the, uh, the midwife. She was eight. What did, what did she do? Did she stay in the attic with Hannah until she grew up that, that long? Like, Ten years until she was 18 or something like that? Was she in there that long? Eight. Hmm. Oh, there's actually a bunch of mentions of eight, which is how old she was when her mother died. Yes. We left after the argument. It was about eight o'clock. Oh, that has nothing to do with it. I think when I drove back, it was about eight or something. And I got back to the house about three. Three. Hmm. The time eight keeps coming up. This is suspicious. I'm suspicious. What time is it now? Is it eight? Nah, it's not really eight. Actually, is it eight? It's close to eight, I think. So maybe it's eight something. I don't know.
I think maybe eight o'clock murdered Simon. Mm. About eight years back. It was a present to myself. I shouldn't even be drinking coffee with the baby. It's been hard trying to give it up. I think they say you can have one cup. Wait, what present? Mm. About eight years back, it was a present to myself. It was a present to myself. Oh, she's talking about the tattoo. Yeah, because she looks at the tattoo when she says that. About eight years back, it was a present to myself. I already searched for a tattoo, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, and I saw every single entry. Search for any more mentions of Carl. <laughs> No, um, I was 15. Carl was older. 17, I think. I was really into him, regardless of how he actually behaved. Lots of drunken teenage sex. We did it in a church once. <laughs> That's stupid. So he got tired of us and we split up after about six months. It was sad, but those early experiences, they help you realize who's really important to you, you know? Family. <laughs> just having sex in a church, I don't know, that's just really funny to me. Um, family, that's another thing I want to search for that I don't think I have. What's really important to you, family? Which is interesting, because that's Eve, right? The one who, like, basically didn't have a family. She's had, like, no one, and she's been hidden in people's attics for years, and stolen away from her mother. And now she suddenly cares about family. Well, I mean, I shouldn't say that she suddenly cares as if she chose to not care about family. I mean, she was cut off from, from family. She didn't really have a choice. She was... Yeah, she was cut off. So if anything, that would make her care about family more, want it more, because she didn't have it. Not in the same way a normal person had it. Like Hannah. So did she want to steal? Did Eve want to steal Hannah's life? Because she wanted family? Differences? She's a better driver than me. She passed the test for us. I tried to take it and nearly crashed the car. <laughs> Learned that you can't rely on confidence to get you through everything. Mm. She is the shy one. She was especially shy around boys. If Hannah liked a boy, I would have to pursue him. It was that way with Carl. Hannah met him first. She had such a crush. Hannah met Carl first. Hannah's the one with the tattoo? Hannah's the one with the tattoo? Why? Why do I think so strongly that Eve is the one with the tattoo? This is driving me crazy. I don't know who's who. It was that way with Carl. Hannah met him first. Or... <sighs> Let me just keep listening to this. It was that way with Carl. Hannah met him first. She had such a crush. I let him take my virginity after a night that his band had played at. It got difficult. Okay, no, 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 all right. So it looks like everything's... seems to be like I think it is. So even though Hannah met Carl first, Eve was the one that pursued him because Hannah was too shy. And Carl is the one who took Eve's virginity. Okay. 
Yeah, so I think the one with the tattoo is Eve. The one with the tattoo and the woman speaking right now, I believe, is Eve. Take my virginity after a night that his band had played at. It got difficult. When I was with Carl, we would have sex, but Hannah couldn't. Couldn't let him see she was a virgin. She had lots of excuses. After a while, we decided that I should take Hannah's virginity. It's not that different to a bruise, pulling a tooth, a graze. We used a hairbrush. After that, we took it in turns that I was always the one who seduced the boys. Until Simon. Wait, I'm sorry, you... <clears throat> she used a hairbrush on her twin sister to take her virginity. Why did she have to be involved? Why couldn't um, Hannah have just used the hairbrush on herself? That sounds really creepy. That sounds really creepy. I mean, that... That's basically like incesty. Like she makes it sound not sexual. She said it wasn't that much different from, you know, a bruise or a cut, because she said they tried to, you know, sink their bodies. If one of them got hurt, the other had to get hurt the same way so that, so that they would match. So she made it sound really not sexual, like it was just another thing to make their bodies match, but... I don't see why Eve had to be involved in that. I don't... I don't get it. Why couldn't Hannah just do that to herself? Maybe she was scared? I don't... <laughs> I don't know. Hannah was so smitten with Simon. She started getting jealous. Didn't want to share. Even the first date. We went to see Tom Cruise at the Old Odeon. We both went. Kept changing places in the toilet. We only had one best dress, so we had to keep swapping clothes. Must have thought we had terrible bladder problems. <laughs> the next date, it was my turn. Um, at the end, I let him kiss me, but that was it. We didn't want another card on our hands, and the Ouija board had said to hold back. After that, it was Hannah's turn, and she slept with him. Broke the rules. Deliberately broke the rules. She wanted to be the first to sleep with him. <laughs> I mean... That's when she got pregnant. From that one time. I just keep thinking of how... What an existential nightmare it would be to be Simon and... At some point realize... That your whole life, this woman you've been spending years and years with, is not actually one woman, but two different people that have been swapping out who the hell knows when. If you learned that, if I learned that, I would be in utter shock, and I would just constantly be thinking about every interaction I have ever had with the person who I thought was Hannah, and just trying to find inconsistency, inconsistencies and thinking, was this Hannah, was this Eve, was this Hannah, was this Eve, what about this memory? Who was that? Who was that? What about there? I... <laughs> it's like incomprehensible. How absolutely terrifyingly creepy that would be of a realization
Sorry, she mentioned a, uh, a Ouija board. When beautiful people died, it was felt like it was a sign. You remember Princess Grace? Grace Kelly? She died in a car crash the year before we met Simon. Oh, spooky. We used a Ouija board to speak to her, and that gave us the power to find him. <laughs> That's what we thought then. That people who die tragically leave some kind of magic behind. We used to share dreams. We used to wake up and write them down in our diaries immediately and compare them. And were the dreams the same? Let's follow up on that dream. No more mentions. Dream died. Well, that's going to come up even less. Seems to be a dead end. Um, she mentioned going to the Odeon Theater, right? No, he was as shy as me. I asked, well, I asked a friend to ask him out for me. We had our first date at the Odeon in North End. Wait, she's lying. She's lying here. I asked a friend to ask him out for me. She didn't ask a friend. She had her twin sister do it. And she didn't ask him out for her. She asked him out for them. We had our first date at the Odeon in North End. We went to see Whiskey Business. I had on my one best dress. Simon paid. He bought me a whisper, and I was worried about getting chocolate on my teeth. Risky business. Risky business. Was that what she said they saw? Went to see Tom Cruise. Did she say what movie they saw? Wanted to be the risky business. I'm not actually familiar with risky business. I'm going to Google it right now. Risky business. Did that have Tom Cruise in it? Yes, it did. Mm -hmm. Alright, I just want to make sure at least that that part matches with their stories. But yeah, Hannah's lying. She didn't have a friend to ask Simon out. Hmm. Uh, magic. Nothing. Just crossing terms off my keyword list here. Uh, what about family? Eve said family's important, right? That's what's important. Six entries found. What is the sixth entry? Try to narrow it down with something dumb. There we go. Then she told me she wanted to help more. She said I should move in with her. She would come clean with Simon about me. I was family. I couldn't have a baby in a bedsit. I told her I didn't want to tell Simon. Told her to wait for the time being. Want to tell Simon? Mm, that's it. No. I think that just leaves one keyword left on my list. Rapunzel. Did I pass? Sorry, I messed it up with all that Rapunzel stuff. Do you need me to do that card again? We were obsessed with fairy tales. Not just the pretty, pretty ones, but the traditional ones. They were dark and real, bizarre and violent. Felt like life. We had this huge old book that I think Mum must have bought from a library sale. The illustrations had thin tracing paper over them to protect them. They were in colour, shiny plates. At the front of the book, was an index of illustrations. We read that more than the actual stories. We'd read aloud the captions and flip between the pictures. There was something intimate about peeling back the tracing paper and dressing the pictures. 
Rapunzel's hair is cut. The eagle plucks out his heart. The princess pricks her finger. Let's just start to search for random keywords. He has a wallet, a huge silly thing, leather, real leather, I think. He packs it full of stuff, business cards, receipts, lottery tickets. He always carries it in his back pocket. I think that's why he's got a bad back. He sets the discs. I haven't seen it, so he must have it on him. He always takes it out of his back pocket before when he comes in. If he's in the house. So Simon worked with glass. I don't know if I ever searched for glass. <laughs> no. I've had enough coffee for today, thanks. Glass of water. Water. I don't think I've ever searched for water either. <laughs> Alright, I'm out of keywords. How much have I hit the database? Hmm, there's still a lot missing. Still a lot missing. I've done maybe more than half, I guess maybe like three fifths. Hmm. I don't feel like I'm getting any closer to actually finding out what happened. Honestly, I'm learning a lot about Eve and Hannah and Simon and how they grew up, but I don't feel like I'm really coming closer to understanding what happened. I feel like I need to go back to like the first stuff I looked at, ever. Re-review it, and then maybe something new will show itself. Right, because now I know so much more than I knew back then. But for now, let me just search for some more random stuff. I don't know. Food. At the time they said it was poison. Food poisoning. I mean, I felt so guilty. If I'd still been at home, maybe I could have done something. I don't know. Dead. It's all that matters, really. The baby. Simon's dead. But the baby, that's how he will live on. Our baby. Oh, that's, okay. Okay, that's, that's important. That's how he'll live on, the baby. Not, not her baby. But the baby that's Simon's baby that's growing inside of Eve. So that's, yeah, that's, that's his legacy. That's what's going to be left. So, yeah, she knew about the baby, as I guess we already knew, but she knew about Eve, and she knew that Eve was pregnant with Simon's baby, and... And I guess that's that's hope for her. Our baby. So she wants to raise it with Eve. Our baby. Rehearsed? You ask me the same question, you'll get the same answer. Is that your evidence? Of course I thought about what happened then. It's all I've thought about. My husband is dead. So they thought her answer seemed rehearsed. Okay, ten entries found. I'm only looking at the first five. Let's narrow this down. Um, all right, let's use garbage words to narrow it down. Dang, nothing. Mm. There's one. 
like I said before, it was three, something like that. I walked in, saw Simon. He was on the floor of the living room. His throat had been cut. What? There was a lot of blood. instead. Hold on. Um, I want to look at that clip and see where it compares time-wise to another clip. Um, which one was it? It was a big, the big confession. Yeah, this one. It happened very quickly. We had So hold on, let me check the times. Okay, so this one was a little bit before. There's still something missing in between, but this one here was a little bit before. Like I said before, it was three. Walked in, saw Simon. Dead on the living room. Blood. He was dead. And then this is just a couple minutes later. It happened very quickly. We hardly had to talk to each other. We agreed almost silently. The baby was what mattered. We'd help each other. Okay, so this is starting to make more sense. The baby was what mattered. So they're talking about the baby inside of Eve, Simon's baby. The baby was what mattered. They would help each other raise it to carry on Simon's... To carry on Simon's legacy life... We cleaned up, we bagged up the broken mirror, her clothes, they're gone. We took him down to the cellar. We that I don't get though. Bagged up the broken mirror, her clothes, as in Hannah's clothes? Why would you bag up her clothes? Who is... I'm gonna search for clothes. I really want to find the intervening clips here, like between the last clip and this one. I really, really want to find all the clips around this because this is really important. Her clothes, they're gone. We took him down to the cellar. We knew I, we had an alibi and we wanted the body to be found later. We wanted to have suspicion on us. Okay, a couple of keywords to try to narrow down on this. Uh, her clothes. Oh, here's another one. What about the time? Oh, that's in between, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so 2.03, 35 seconds, so that would put this at like 40 seconds. Like 2 colon 40. This is 3.25, so there's still something missing in between, but this is an intervening, uh, <laughs> a missing link, if you will. Hold on, let me add this to session. There we go. Her story is that she'd waited for him to come back. Her story. She put on my wig. Some of my. Her story, the name of the game. Her story is that she'd waited for him to come back. She put on my wig. Some of my clothes. Pretended to be me. They talked. She'd enjoyed being me. He said. He wanted to be with me. Then he took out a present. Is that... That might be it. She says her story. As if she doesn't believe that it's actually true, but regardless, her story. She put on a wig to look like Eve, pretended to be Eve. And Simon said that he wanted to be with Eve, and he said that to the person who he thought was Eve, but it was actually Hannah. And I think Simon wanted to be with Eve because of the pregnancy. He wanted to have a kid, and he couldn't have a kid with Hannah. And that maybe broke Hannah's heart 
and she murdered him? Broke the glass that he had given her? Broke the glass of the mirror that he had given her and cut his throat? He wanted to be with me. Then he took out a present. Another mirror. Just like the one he'd given her earlier. <laughs> that unique present. It she went crazy. It wasn't smashed unique. the mirror. They argued, screamed. He hit her. So she grabbed a piece of the mirror and just swung it round. She cut his throat clean open. She'd only meant to scare him off. Okay, it's starting to come together. It's definitely starting to come together. But... That doesn't sound right. I don't find that plausible. Her story is that they were arguing and... How, how did she say the mirror broke? Okay, so she smashed the mirror. So she grabbed and After he hit her, she grabbed a piece of the mirror and cut his throat with it. I'm sorry, that doesn't wash. I mean, I don't know exactly how long it was between when he went, when Simon went missing and Hannah reported him as missing. But it couldn't have been that long, right? I mean, we're talking days, right? Only days? And if it had only been days since Simon, you know, since she had argued and had, since she had been hit by Simon and since she had grabbed a piece of mirror and cut his throat, wouldn't you see it on her? I mean, if she was hit by Simon, okay, well, it depends where he hit her. Maybe he didn't hit her hard, or maybe hit her, you know, somewhere that's covered up by clothing. Maybe not in the face. Okay. But if she grabbed a piece of mirror in a frenzy and accidentally... Or maybe not accidentally, I mean, this is after he supposedly hit her, so maybe, you know, maybe she, she was actually trying to hurt him in self-defense. But regardless, this is... they're arguing. So, these aren't like calm, collected, you know, movements. Like, they were... they were both in a rage, apparently. If she grabbed a chunk of mirror while in a, a rage and arguing and cut his throat open, her hand would be cut horribly. Right? I mean, this isn't like something with a nice handle that's sharp on the end. This is a chunk of mirror. It's going to be just as sharp on one end as it is on the other. Her hand would be cut like she would have bandages on her hands. And you'd be able to see that if it's only been days since this happened. And she's in the interview room. They would have noticed, you know, and they would have questioned her about it. Right? You don't just grab a pe you don't just grab a chunk of broken off mirror in a frenzy and kill somebody with it without hurting yourself. Like it just doesn't happen. Even with knives. Like even with kitchen knives that actually have handles. I'm pretty sure hurting yourself, like cutting yourself with a knife, is extremely common. Maybe I can find a mention of it. L let me see, let me search for hand. I've never searched for hand. But she mentioned her hand. Uh, cut. His body. Did not real. His throat. It looked like his throat had been cut. And I didn't see his glasses. There's these thick glasses. It doesn't always wear. And I don't know if I ever searched for glasses, either. So that's another keyword I want to search for. Yeah, so I feel like this is starting to come together. 
it's starting to come together. With these final clips, like right around when she's sort of confessing, I guess, and saying what happened, and then at the end asks for a lawyer. But the story that we're getting of how Simon was killed by Hannah doesn't it doesn't sound right. It doesn't sound right. No. I don't know, it's hard to tell because I'm just looking at so many disjointed fragments. But it doesn't sound right. I don't believe it. Alright, well, I think that's a pretty good place to end this episode. Because I feel like I finally kind of hit a bit of a breakthrough as to what happened. Like, we finally have a story. We, we finally have, pardon the pun, her story. We finally have Hannah's story of what happened. Well, at least her story as told through Eve, and who knows, maybe Eve is lying. To paint Hannah in a bad light. You know, I don't know. But we finally have her story. And that's something to go on, even if it does sound a bit implausible. And I've got a whole list of keywords to search for. I've got cellar, alibi, throat, glasses. So I think we're gonna find some good stuff. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And I'll be back soon.